Today I'll be starting a four video series on asthma and COPD, the two most common forms of obstructive lung disease. This first video will be to give a very brief introduction to those conditions, focusing on their definitions and how they relate to one another within the broader category of obstructive lung disease. The second video will discuss the pathogenesis and pathophysiology of the two conditions, and the third and fourth videos will cover the diagnosis and treatment of chronic stable disease and of acute exacerbations, respectively. The formal learning objectives for this introductory video are first, to define asthma, chronic bronchitis, emphysema, and the COPD, and second, to describe the relationship between those four diagnoses. As I started, asthma and COPD are both considered members of a category of chronic lung conditions called obstructive lung disease, named such because the single most important pathophysiologic feature in both is airway obstruction. There's a classical paradigm of obstructive lung disease which has historically been represented by this Venn diagram. The diseases emphysema and chronic bronchitis are sometimes considered to be at two ends of the COPD spectrum, or more accurately, two overlapping sets of manifestations within COPD. As the diagram suggests, these three conditions, asthma, chronic bronchitis, and emphysema, are not mutually exclusive. Some patients have both emphysema and chronic bronchitis, some have asthma and emphysema, and so on and so forth. Unfortunately, despite the frequency with which this diagram has been reproduced over the years, it's not a particularly accurate or helpful representation. A more modern paradigm might look something like this. In this case, we still have asthma, chronic bronchitis, and emphysema, but the degrees of overlap are not equal. There are many more people with both chronic bronchitis and emphysema than either one of those with asthma. In addition, there are a few other members of the obstructive lung disease club. There is bronchiectasis, which is permanent enlargement of the airways, leading to chronic bacterial colonization, frequent infections, excessive mucus production, and a chronic productive cough. There is cystic fibrosis, an autosomal recessive genetic disorder involving a membrane protein that acts as a chloride ion channel. Finally, a condition called allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, which is a chronic allergic response to aspergillus colonization, which is most frequently seen in asthmatics. There is also a variation to this modern paradigm, which will help us understand how the term COPD fits into all these other diagnoses. And to understand the variation, I'll need to go over four definitions. Let's start with asthma. What exactly is it? The contemporary definition of asthma is that it's a chronic inflammatory disorder of the airways characterized by airway hyperresponsiveness to a variety of external stimuli, which results in episodic wheezing, dyspnea, and cough, and which is associated with variable airflow obstruction that is usually, but not always, reversible. How does that compare to chronic bronchitis? Chronic bronchitis is a chronic inflammatory disorder of the airway, resulting in a chronic productive cough with episodic wheezing, dyspnea, and acute exacerbations of that cough, which is usually, though not always, associated with incompletely reversible airflow obstruction. So the symptoms of asthma and chronic bronchitis sound kind of similar. Next is emphysema. This is a permanent enlargement of distal air spaces associated with destruction of airspace walls, that is destruction of something which a pathologist refers to as the pulmonary asinus, which consists of respiratory bronchioles, alveolar ducts, and at the distalmost end of the airways, the alveoli themselves. You may note that while asthma and chronic bronchitis are defined largely based on symptoms, the definition of emphysema doesn't explicitly include symptoms. Finally, what is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease? This is a chronic inflammatory disorder of the airway associated with incompletely reversible airflow obstruction, which is usually progressive and which is characterized by episodic exacerbations. Okay, now those four definitions sound largely overlapping, which is partly why they are so tricky to distinguish in practice. So let me return to the Venn diagrams, but show you one that better illustrates exactly how COPD relates to the other diagnoses. 
So here we have something that looks similar to the first diagram we started with, only now there is much more overlap between chronic bronchitis and emphysema, since they usually but not always coexist. Then layered on top of this, I'll add in the finding of airway obstruction, which is defined by abnormal pulmonary function tests or tests of peak flow during exacerbations. So everyone with asthma has some degree of airway obstruction, and most people, though not all, with either chronic bronchitis and or emphysema also have airway obstruction. Importantly, there are some people with airway obstruction as determined by PFTs who have neither asthma, chronic bronchitis, nor emphysema. These would be the patients that have things like bronchiectasis and cystic fibrosis. And finally, here is how COPD fits in. So patients with COPD are those who have either chronic bronchitis and or emphysema who also have airway obstruction. I think it's easy to understand why doctors and patients alike get confused by the terms, which of course have evolved with time and may not even have universal consensus regarding their use today. I've heard statements from doctors that asthma and COPD are mutually exclusive, or that a diagnosis of chronic bronchitis requires abnormal PFTs, uh, neither of which are true based on the modern conventional definition of these diseases. Nevertheless, the terms asthma, chronic bronchitis, emphysema, and COPD are still frequently mixed up, and great care must be taken to ensure that use is standardized in order to prevent confusion. That concludes this very brief introduction to some different forms of obstructive lung disease. The next video in this series will cover the pathogenesis and pathophysiology of asthma and COPD.